insurance, this is Tony Kainis, and today I want to talk to you about how a retention bonus, a well-placed, well-structured retention bonus can save you a lot of talent and a lot of money. I first ran into this idea when a friend accepted a role with a major carrier's underwriting trainee program. He was coming right out of college with his RMI major. He shared that part of the deal was a $40,000 bonus at the end of the, of the fourth year after graduating from, from the program. And at first I was like, wow, dude, you won the lottery. And I wondered whether it made sense for the company. I wondered whether the company had lost its mind throwing that kind of money at an inexperienced employee. Then over the last few years, I've seen so many kids take the same tried and true path. They graduate with an RMI major, they join underwriting training programs at like 55, 60,000 a year. And that program lasts about six months, usually based on the AU program and they become commercial underwriters. They do that for two years while they manage a book for, for two years while completing CPCU. And by around the time that they get CPCU, they get frustrated at not getting promoted quickly enough. They leave the company for a senior underwriter role making somewhere between 80 and 120,000. So if you think about it from their perspective, it's, it's a no brainer. We're talking about a 45 to 100% raise after two years. It's a massive, massive, massive race. So after seeing this happen over and over and over and over with many of the kids that call into in chat with Tony when they're about to graduate their RMI program, it finally hit me. A $40,000 bonus actually makes perfect sense, assuming that it was done intelligently. And by the way, I have no inside knowledge as to whether it was done intelligently. Let me let me walk you through my thinking. So, so let's say you hire a class of 10 underwriters, 10 underwriting trainees at $55,000 a year. Most of them come from an RMI majors, maybe some don't. $55,000 a year, given that they're literally in class for the first six months when you hire them, you get zero productivity from them for, for those six months. Then they get their own desk and then their own book and hopefully they become productive quickly uh, by, the, by the start of, of year two. And let's say that you lose 50% of the class to big offers by, for, by competitors by the end of, of the second or third year. It's well documented that the, the cost of replacing an employee is somewhere between 40% and 200% of salary. So let's be conservative and, and say that, that it costs you 27,500 for each of them or 137,500 to replace all, all five of them. And then you do it all over again. You start all over, all over again. The smart thing, in my opinion, the smart thing to do would be you look at your history. And I'm assuming this is what this company did. You look at your history and you see that underwriters coming out, out, out of, of your underwriting training program Program that make it to the end of year four tend to stay with you for an average of, of 10 years. The why? I, I can take some guesses, but let's say you don't have that on that. But likely, if they make it to the end of the year four, at that point, they're comfortable. They, they found their way. They know how to get things done in the, in the company. They, they, they like the agents they work with. They like the people they, they work with. They've got a promotion. In, in short, they, they've really kind of set down roots in the company that, that they wouldn't have set in the first couple of years. So that $40,000 care hut that, they've, that you promised them at the, at the beginning, if they made it to the end of year four, that's a significant amount of money for a young professional. It becomes a, a, great, a great incentive to be patient, to look the other way when they get the inevitable calls fr from recruiters. They might even be thinking that once they get the bonus, they'll walk away. If you know that historically when the underwriting trainees graduates tend to leave is in those first two to three years. And if they make it to the end of year four, they'll stay. If your, if your historical stats show, show, that, show that they'll stay for average for 10 years, it would totally be worth it to offer us a significant bonus for, for, for that. If you design it correctly, this could be a massive advantage in, in the way that, 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 you, that you manage your talent. This could be a massive, a massive advantage during the, during the talent wars we're, we're living through. I, I really wonder why more companies don't, don't do it. And, and it's not just a big bonus that, that might do it. I've seen other examples at, at other companies. For example, I know one company that allows its field people who accept a job at headquarters to keep the company car. Fantastic benefits and a fantastic way to keep them around. That same company also has uh, stock options, even though they're not a they're not an insurance startup. You get stock options and the stock options are designed in such a way at any given time, if, if you walk away, you're giving up an unvested part of, of your stock options. So anyway, there are many ways to, to design this. And I'd love to, to hear in the comments. I, I, and if you can't share it publicly, send me a message. What is your company doing when it comes to, to creative ways to, to retain the talent that is that is hardest to retain? What are you doing to retain your analytics people, your actuarial people, et cetera? Love to hear, to hear from you. If you can't share it publicly, send me a message. Love to, love to hear what the different companies are doing. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this was helpful.